to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling. Do you believe you are capable of choosing your future? Sometimes it takes just one person to believe in you, for you to believe in yourself. If you find yourself continuing to say, someday I will take better care of myself, only to continue living the same day over and over and over again, then you, my friend, are in the right place. I am your biggest cheerleader, inspiring you to become you, on purpose and with intention. Are you ready to create a life you love? I'm excited to share with you some big ideas that you can use today to inspire, impact, and influence your life and everyone in it. The Becoming You show starts now. Hello, my friends. How are you? I hope, I hope that you are as excited as I am. I I am giddy, giddy, giddy with excitement because we are getting ready to launch our new offer. Um, it is a offer for women um, and brave men, but women because we are efforting to discover the leader within. And that's the program. That's what it's called, the leader within. It um, We've kind of hashed out all the details and more to come on it, but I wanted to like tease it in because that's what I'm excited about today. Um, that's what I'm excited about. That's what I've been excited about all week. It's going to be 12 months. It's going to be a year long, uh, I, the year of you. And I can't think of a better way to spend a year than to really learn and navigate what it looks like to stand into your personal power, what it looks like to understand um, your personal mastery and your social mastery and really integrate the two so that you can tap into the leader within the leader that has always been there that's just kind of waiting for you to give it permission to come out to step into and to really create awesomeness with your already awesomeness so anyway that is the program and more is going to come on that but what i found in working in the details of creating this offer and launching you know what i'm going to call my baby our baby into the world within the leader within, um, I needed to remind myself of the opportunities that exist when you slow down time. And I know that we are so busy in the doing. I know that for most of us, if we don't have like a pit stop practice of separating ourselves from one task to the next, we just barrel through. We just barrel through task after task after task and the pressure it builds and builds and builds and builds. And then somewhere that has to be released. And unfortunately, it's released on people that can't handle it. And it isn't their responsibility to. And so I thought about this conversation for me in my life. And I thought, you know what, I would just share it with you. So I, I wanted to break it down like I do so often in these podcasts on how to strategize to slow down time, to challenge, if you will, the hustle culture that many of us have been programmed to believe is the key to fulfillment, right? And we are going to explore the importance of truly drinking it in, taking moments to recognize and to appreciate the present, um, honoring the here and the now. I, I believe that there is a fostering a personal freedom that comes from it and really cultivating a life where we are free to be our authentic selves and really pursue what generally what genuinely matters to us. So I believe that's what I believe that our life's aim is to be fully alive in it and it is to be aware. And so I was thinking about how we might be able to framework this up in my efforts to slow down time, slow down time for me and give you the same strategies to slow down time for yourself. So strategy one is going to be around embracing a reverent mindset. So what do I mean by that? This mindset involves treating life 
with a deep, a tremendously deep sense of reverence, recognizing that every single moment is precious and it's meant to be deeply felt. By cultivating and embracing, adopting this perspective, we really break free from the relentless pace of this whole, this hustle culture. And we can really truly savor our daily experiences because there is a deep appreciation and a deep gratitude and a deep sense of being present in the moment. This reverent mindset starts with acknowledging this one simple thing that I want you to capture and I want you to remind yourself. If it's the, if it's the only thing that you get from our conversation today, I want this to be it. We're not supposed to miss it. We're not supposed to miss out on life. Where are we missing out? Because we're just rushing through, hurried through the days, the minutes, the hours of this life. Our life isn't meant to be missed. It is meant to be lived. And too often we find ourselves just rushing through our days, driven by this, this frantic urgency that leaves us numb to the present. We get entangled in negative thoughts, and overwhelm, um, and, and consumed, right, by the endless shuffle of papers, of daily routines. This is not, friends, how we were meant to live. And this became abundantly clear as we were working on launching not just the leader within, but shift and all of the programs, right? The frenzy, the tasks, and the to-dos. It was, it was void of joy and recognition and celebration. And we had to re-remind ourselves, re-remind the team, re-remind ourselves that this is exciting, that this, this needs to be celebrated. And we need to do so by slowing it all down and not missing it, right? Our bodies, our physical bodies, we're not designed to sit behind our desks all day, right? numb in the like the repetition and deprived of movement, right? Our souls are not meant to be trapped in the past, right? Bound by stories of anger and regret and resentment and bitterness. And if you live there more times than you want to, I want you to listen to my podcast last week on changing the past. Um, our hearts crave, right? Crave a forgiveness, crave a reframe, crave a understanding and a new meaning to the past. It craves it, right? Our hearts also crave connection, right? Not, not a life with disconnection and, and chaotic urgency, right? And our families and our loved ones, they don't want our absence to be their memory of us. They don't want our absence to be the memory of us. And I think if you were honest with yourself, you wouldn't want that to be true for you either. When we live in this constant state of hustle, there's a price and it's high and it's costly, right? It's a life that's blurred by unmet expectations, disconnection, constant worry, and minimal activity, right? Minimal action, okay? This is why it's crucial for us to shift from the chaos and the clutter of our daily life back into the true order of the universe, right? And in this true order of the universe, if we're brave and courageous enough to align with it, there's freedom and there is peace, but we must be willing to see it which means we must be willing to slow down, to slow down and be present and to recognize the sacredness of this life. It means that we have to limit the chatter and the distractions that are constantly vying for our attention and redirecting us out of our purpose. We have to prioritize meaningful connections. Those must be at the forefront 
of our mind when we wake up. You know, I've, I've shared this in the podcast before, but how many times are you waking up thinking about the people that need you to summon the best of you? Like, who are those people? Are you prioritizing connecting with them? Or again, are you just responding to the urgency of other people by way of email, by way of DMs, by way of by way of socials, by way, like, are those the people that you want to be prioritizing? It's important for us to understand that. We also have to honor our body and our soul and, and listen to it. And when it's asking us to get up and to move, not listening and continuing to sit, to plow through more work is not honoring. It's not in reverence to this life that we get to live, okay? So strategy number one is really just adopting an in intentional mindset around the reverence for life as a gift, okay? Strategy two, we're gonna deploy attention and time and energy, right? Slowing down time involves truly this conscious decision and deployment of our attention, our time, our energy. It's the strategy is about setting a different intention and pacing for our lives. It it invites us to become more aware of our surroundings and to make deliberate choices, deliberate that allow us to feel, right? That allow us to summon, if you will, that energy, that feeling, right? To be able to connect and to infuse the efforts of our day, the activity of the day, the interactions of the day with love and hope and light. Like, what is that for you, right? What is it for you to really bring that attention, that level of awareness, that level of energy back into the space? That is you. And I think for so many of us, it's really a reminder to feel again, right? To actually feel something. Like when was the last time you felt excited? When was the last time you felt enthusiasm? When was the last time you felt joy? What was the last time you created it on purpose? Most of us are moving so fast that we don't feel anything deeply, right? We have to slow down again to feel again. And it doesn't matter what, you don't need to have a, a massive meditative or yoga practice to be able to do this. You could literally just summon it right now by thinking about something right now that brings this level of joy and love and and excitement and enthusiasm, right? I mean, before I got on this podcast, I wanted to be excited because that feels great. And so I thought, what makes me excited? And what's been making me excited is the very first thing that I shared, which was the leader within and the year of you. Like nothing gets me more fired up than enrolling people into the massive potential that is available for them to choose. And nothing is more exciting for me than to be able to give that to somebody to in a, in a year of transformation. So again, you can feel that right now. It's a choice. You don't have to wait for anything to happen. You don't. You can just choose it now. The other thing that we need to do in order to do that, that, that intention, attention, and, and um, energy is to connect our heart. Connect our ability to love to our life, right? About having emotional presence to be fully engaged, right? In the experiences, in our relationships, in our activities. But how often do you find yourself trying to, I'll say multitask, even though that's not even a thing, but when you're with your kids, are you with your kids or are you kind of with your kids and kind of with your phone? Are you with your, your significant other, your husband, your wife, 
or are you kind of with them and kind of in your head or kind of, again, on your phone or kind of thinking about other things? Can you try to be fully enrolled in the moment that is? What would that look like for you? And can you put that level of love, that level of passion, um, that level of hope back into the efforts of your day? I truly believe that having this positive and passionate mindset really helps in, enhance our engagement and our overall fulfillment and life satisfaction. Thirdly, I want us to have clarity of the time trap. Friends, this is so important for me and my life. I hope that this part of this conversation is important for you in your life. There is a common misconception that even though we always feel like there's never enough time, on the flip side of that, friends, that we'll always have more time. And this time trap often leads to missed opportunities, to unfulfilled relationships, to regret, to resentment, to shame. And and so I thought I would dive into a couple of these time traps that I've been coaching on recently and, and I've coached myself through. The first one is when our children leave home, right? When they transition out of the house into college, when they transition from one, from elementary to middle school, to middle school, to high school, right? High school to college, college to, to their, their career, right? Many of us believe that in those transitions, once our children leave or transition into a new phase of their life, that we'll have more time, that we'll have more time to be present and less stressed. We're waiting for that day. We're waiting for that moment, right? where we'll actually have the time to appreciate and, and enjoy them. But that time is now. It, it's not in some future date. And so I want to invite you to make the most of the time with them right now. This also shows up when our friends are no longer friends, right? Friendships can fade if we don't make a conscious effort to nurture them. And we might assume, huh, this is what we do, that there will always be time to reconnect or to be a better friend. But if we don't, and we don't choose that now, those relationships can and they do slip away and they fade away. When we lose our job, right? Job loss is a huge wake-up call. And so often we think that we would have eventually showed up with, with the excellence that was being asked of us and full contribution. But so often that eventually never comes, right? The time to truly give our best is now. It's not in some future date when things are easier or, or when you get that promotion or when or when you get that validation or when you get that level of appreciation or again, when, when your life situations are different, then you have the reverence for life. Then you have the appreciation for life. It's a trap to think it and it's a costly one. When our significant other or spouses leap, right? Relationships, as you all know, they require ongoing effort and ongoing attention. And if we neglect them, thinking that we'll just make it up later or thinking that there will be a time sometime when we can be a better wife or we can be a better husband or that we'll actually honor them better. And then we get blindsided when they leave as if we hadn't known or suspected that this was a possibility all along. When we hope and pray for one more day, one more day, how many times have you thought that when you've lost a loved one, right? We wish, we wish for more time, right? 
to say things that maybe we haven't said, to express love in a way that was more intentional, that wasn't scattered, that wasn't distracted, that we were there with them with our full presence, with our full attention, to apologize, to forgive, to just sit there and be with them, right? Don't wait for that day. These are the things that I want us to do now while we still have the chance so that we can do that. So then we don't need to pray for one more day because we've honored the day with great reverence. And when our own life is in question, right? Facing our own mortality or our own health um, struggles, it, it, it brings a blood for most of my clients, myself included, of regret, right? As if we've always been planning to truly live someday. Someday I will take better care of myself. Someday I will love with every ounce of my body in true presence, in, in, in true attention. Someday. Friends, the outcome is predictable. If we keep postponing our lives, we will miss the hints because we're searching for what already is and what has already been the time really, truly to fully and authentically live is right now. And by recognizing and by addressing all of this, we can be more mindful and we can literally slow down time. The fourth and last strategy for really slowing down time, and I've kind of alluded to it as I've gone through, is tapping into our senses. To tap into our senses, allowing us to fully immerse ourselves in the present moment. There is magic, magic all around you. Right now, right this minute, notice, notice. It's not in the moments of yesterday or the minutes of tomorrow, but right now, right where you are. When we live anywhere other than here, we don't really fully live at all. We don't really fully sense with the fullness that is available to us right now. And without shame for our absence, right, or blame of others, can we choose right now to re-enroll ourselves into our lives, free from the sad stories of what could have been or should have been, right? And from that, we are free to truly embrace the essence of who we are and the gift of our senses. These senses allow us to slow down our experiences of time and life itself by actually ex by actually experiencing it without hurry and without hustle. So when you think through these senses, the seeing, the smelling, the touching, the, the, the tasting, the hearing, what would that look like for you right now as, as you hear me inviting you to this? I'm inviting you to be with you right now. Are you missing it? What do you see? What do you see right now? Can you look around? Can you notice the colors, the textures, the patterns around you? Can you observe the light, right? And the shadow on surfaces? Can you just be delighted that you get to see in color, that you get to take it all in? What are you smelling right now? Can you take a big, deep breath in? And can you appreciate the smells around you? Can you appreciate your coffee in the morning? Can you appreciate the scented oils that you might use for your baths? Can you appreciate the smell of a, a um, deliberated and cooked meal? Can you appreciate the smell of life, 
What can you touch right now? Can you feel the textures and the objects around you? Can you touch the skin, the shoulder, the face of whomever is next to you? Taste. Have we forgotten how to, friends? Or do we just hurriedly eat so that we can get on to the next thing? And can you listen? What do you hear? What do you hear right now? Do you hear the birds? I do. What do you hear? And that was just a moment in time, but didn't we slow it down? Didn't it feel like lingering in the senses allowed you to slow and savor all of it? It is the key to truly experiencing life. And you are deserving of it, my friends. So we're going to embrace a reverent mindset. We're going to embrace life as the gift that it is truly connecting and experiencing it. We're going to deploy our attention, our intention, and our energy in our surroundings by making deliberate choices to, to connect fully, deeply, with full presence to the people that we get to live and love and lead. We are going to get clarity of that time trap and realize that the time is now. That false belief that we will always have more time, that there will be a someday, someday never comes until that day. Someday never comes until that day. Don't let that day happen. Choose this day. Choose this day. And then tap into all of your senses. Tap into all of them. Be intentional about these practices. Your life matters. Your attention to it matters. So I hope that you will use these practices to slow down, to slow down time, if even just for a few minutes every single day, my beautiful friends, because you deserve the best that life has to offer. And bringing your best into it is the way that we do just that. Have a beautiful one, everybody. Take care. Talk to you soon. Bye. You have been listening to the Becoming You Show with me, your host, Leah Rowling, where I share big ideas to inspire, impact, and influence your life. Tune in every Friday at 11 Central on TransformationTalkRadio.com for your morning cup of coffee, the hug you never want to end, and that inspirational message that you felt was written just for you. Each show is inspiring you to become you with purpose and intention. For more information or to connect with me, visit www.LeahRolling.com.